What about appropriate to the person you're interviewing? If you're interviewing someone on the street, perhaps, who doesn't have a, necessarily a high level of education, then you want to use language appropriate to them. If you're talking to an expert, you maybe want to show that you've done a lot of homework. And if your language is too simple, they might not think that you really well prepared or that you know your subject matter. So I think appropriate covers all the bases. I gain a lot in terms of uh, training. Um, I'm not meaning the training that like in workshops like this, but the training that like when I send an article or a story, I am told to get more, you know? So actually I get back to the field and work. So it is more practical that really I, I get more training and I've really achieved a lot. But the second project was very nice, very enjoyable, and I, I really worked for it with all power, with vigor and everything. The second project is, I mean, it was very nice, and um, I, I enjoyed it more than the, the, the first project. So um, towards the end of this project, has been very nice, and I wish that it, it was, I mean, it, I, I wish that it continues. Very helpful to journalists like me, and especially topics that cover, um, that talk about things on how we should deal with um, conflicts and how we should bring out the other sides of the stories because a lot of times we report the positive um, part of the stories. So I believe that by the end of the workshop we will have covered a lot more and willingly we will go out there and bring it out through our writings and our books. I have been with Sudan Board since April 2010. Uh, this training uh, is one of the training, the several trainings that we have attended since then. And this particular one, I would consider it like a refresher course because we have gone through several trainings. And uh, each training has been coming with its own package, new things, or maybe we review what we have been going through. But of course, with the different trainers we have been having, we have always been having new ideas. I feel that at this moment, both the journalists here in the south and the north under the MICT project, we have been empowered that we have uh, published articles on the website, both radio pieces, uh, pictorials and all that. It has just been the effort of the MICT project in Berlin, the people, the resource persons that have been giving us all this knowledge that have been able to make it all this far. I think even our rating by our readers can tell for itself. Uh, it's so unfortunate that the MI City project is soon coming to an end, as we have been informed. But this end does not say that they have left nothing on the ground. The manpower is here on the ground already. Uh, there's no need to say that where shall we start from? We are already here, the journalists. We are over 30 in South Sudan. Uh, there are over 20 in uh, North Sudan. This political line that divided the two countries in July should not be a problem to us. We are journalists. Journalists can work without borders. Even uh, I know you know it very well that a journalist can practice the profession in any part of the world. We have the Northern journalists. We have the Southern journalists. If we can come together, because we have already been empowered, we already have the tools of trade, which is the knowledge we have acquired. We can come up with maybe a newspaper. We can come out maybe with an online publication. That one will be like the fruits MICT project has left in Sudan. For me, I don't look at Sudan North and Sudan South. The MICT project was Sudan.